Involved Care. Anybody heard of Involved Care? Hey, now we're at three. <laughs> Who's our marketing person in the room, John? You gotta do some more work. Um, well, thanks for coming. And I'm gonna take you through a couple of quick slides. I'm gonna take you through actually a live demo. Um, where did Involved Care come from? Yeah, that's my mom. Um, and she's why I'm here. And everything that's good in me came from her. And I say that, and my father has heard me give a talk, and he didn't exactly really like when I say that, because I don't actually say, Dad, you're the reason why I'm you know, uh, happy to have uh, just been where I am. But my mom passed away a couple of years ago. I was her caregiver for 12 years. She was only 68. Um, she almost died having me. Um, so in the 39 years that I had, everyone was a gift. Um, but I can tell you, when you kind of look over the course of her life, you know, you see the things that are in, in green, very educated. You know, has a PhD and a master's, um, two masters and a bachelor. She's had three kids, those are in the orange. Um, I'm the middle child, I do have middle child syndrome. And um, in the blue are all her health issues over time. And so my entire life has been around caregiving. If you notice one there, the small bowel cancer, that was site 72. I was, uh, that was uh, I was being born. She had the tubal ligation as a result. Um, and then six years later, had my son. Uh, my son, had my brother. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, had my brother. My son and my brother were all But had my, you know, and so when you think about that, you know, it's kind of like, you know, I I've been a caregiver for a lot of years, is, is really the point in all that. I'm going to sweat now. Um, <laughs> But those last you know, 12 years or so, you know, from 98 to 2011 is really when things started to spiral. And so during that time, and my mother lived in Detroit, I lived in Los Angeles, and from 2007 to 09, she lived with me and, and my family. And I also have a special needs child. Um, so there was so much in caregiving, and it became so much a part of my life. And I was running another startup during this time as well. Um, and so there was just so much going on. And I realized I made a ton of mistakes. And this is the quantification that literature says of my mistakes um, and how they ended up impacting my mother and how she acted back towards us. So, one, 43% of seniors do not want to be a burden. None of them want to be a burden. But they basically do not want to have to burden their children with their health problems and want them to live their lives, right? And they want to also remain independent. 4.4% 4 .4 of Medicare beneficiaries, this is another step, failed to pick a prescription up, mostly because they couldn't. You know, we're talking about, you know, concerns over cost, or they couldn't get there, okay? Right? And then 15%, fewer trips to the doctor because, you know, a lot of people don't drive. So you don't go to the doctor, you just don't go by. Well, these are things that just shouldn't be routine at that point in terms of maintenance of health. But seniors also, at least, and I'm gonna make this in my mother, but it's also been a lot, you know, verified by a lot of data, you just don't feel right asking for help, especially their children because it signifies a change in relationship. And it also can signify a change in independence. And one of the things that you know, we're really trying to do with Involved Care is address that problem. So our opportunity is to make it so the seniors say, let's talk again. It's always gonna happen. It's not like, you know, I don't wanna be a burden. It's let's talk again. And then on the, 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 the adult child side, it really is, we are always here for you. And so that way you know it's a much more collective experience than that one kind of primary caregiver, like I was a lot of times with my mother, um, and then my mother dealing with me, um, her favorite child, yet still in certain times, not so much the favorite. So I'm gonna take you through involved care, um, and you'll give a quick uh, demo here. We are live, and, and we are live here too. Um, from a design perspective, you can see there are these large tiles. You can use this you know, essentially as, you know, a caregiver or as a senior. It's all about family connectedness. That's what Involved Care is about. And there are different use cases, obviously, around who's using it. So, if I am, you know, if I were my mother and I was basically looking at Involved Care, I'd say, you know what? She used to say this all the time. Somebody come visit me. So you tap on visit someone, and my mom would say, you know, you just type it in, you know, visit me. You know, you know where I live. 
you know, I want you to do that, you know, Saturday at, let's call it 9.15 a.m. Um, and then you have the opportunity then to add any other thoughts that can just accompany this request. And so everything that you do in this, you know, in, in bulk here is create a request for help, but the system essentially asks for you. How does that work? When you notice to the side here, these are all different requests that people in the family network are sharing with each other. So if I hit connect, I can invite other people in my family to be a part of this, whether I'm the caregiver or I'm the senior, and both, both work with involved here based on our data. Seniors will use this and invite the families. Family caregivers will use it and invite in the seniors if they can. Oh yeah, those are the dates in yellow. So um, the other ones are, well, I'll just say down here, get refill as an example, is an example of a request, and I'll just tip, tap this at the bottom. Get refill is like, pick up a refill for me. That's one of the requests that you know, my mother would say. She's like, go, you know, can you pick up my, my meds? You know, that's an example. Um, but the system asks everybody in the network to do it. And someone can then volunteer to choose that and say, I'll do it. And so as an example, I don't know if we put in some of the, uh, put in some of the rules. Well, in any event, somebody can add something new and then say, all right, I'm going to say I'm going to do the, to get the refill, and I've accepted it. Um, and now I've allowed myself to remind me. I can hit remind, and it's actually uh, it integrates with iCal and iOS and for Google Calendar or Google. And you can actually create a reminder for yourself to do it. And then you can actually comment and add pictures to give more context to every single request that's made, so you make a better request. You know, a lot of times, you know, when my mother would say something like, you know, pick up my meds or pick up a certain medication, you know, a lot of pharmacies make mistakes. And so she, you know, she could actually have a picture, or if she wanted a certain type of product in addition to what she had and she saw, you know, on that she wanted me to pick up, she could actually say that in an in an Can somebody pick up, you know, some, you know, boost or something that she had a lot of. So that was something that, you know, these are things that were, were so real life for us that we're putting in here. And lastly, I'm going to show you, because I don't want to go too much longer, a lot of times we have this situation where you know, we can't be there. So I'm, I'm, I'm around as a, as, a, as a local person when my mom lives with me, but when she lived back in, in Detroit, you know, there was a lot I just couldn't do. My sister and my brother um, were in the Midwest, but they weren't local. So what do we do? Well, we set up this resources area. We have a local services database with over 100,000 vendors across you know, many, many categories that allow for you know, people who are remote to choose from one of these categories. As I flip through it up, you can see them, I'm not sure. But there's respite, retirement communities, residential care, medical equipment, meal programs, um, home health, geriatric managers, emergency response, and so forth. But let's say adult daycare. You know, there were many times when my mother would need some adult daycare. And so I would just go here and I just pop in my mother's zip code, hit search. And it brings up providers right next, you know, near her in her zip code. And now I tap on the search results and you get, you know, a map. You get the phone number, you can call right away if you're using this on the phone. Make that adult daycare appointment. Um, you can open it in, in, in Google Maps and get directions like you normally would in that time if you need them. So in all of these different uh, scenarios, we have third party vendors also who can be contacted at a moment's notice to service you know, mom's needs or for mom to say, I need this, I need a ride, I can't get any of my deadbeat children to help me, so I'm going to get a transportation <laughs> service and I'm going to do that and she, she had done that too, um, even at times when she would admit that she couldn't drive. So a lot of these things, this involved care is made for family connectedness, and it's made to actually be a private care network. And what we're really learning now with the pilots that we have is that you know, when the retirees or seniors would actually use a product, they actually do understand that, you know what, I can put this in and I can have my entire family you know, volunteer, essentially, and I just want to go back to this so you can see the team, but they can volunteer for the things that they can and that's the point. It's request for help. I don't have to ask, I don't have to call right away to each individual to hope somebody helps me. They can volunteer. That gets everyone involved, and that's involved here.